nicely. The cow enters from the side. Feed trough comes in. Um, with our robot, we can what we call index in the box. So we have a large, medium, and small position. So if you have that heifer starting off and you have a bit of room at the back, we call the cow toilet at the back. So it just tightens her up and stops her from going forward and back, basically. Um, when you put in the cow first time, basically, we have a time of five camera, G5 camera. So the arm comes out automatically and picks up the teats pretty straight away. So there's no... There's no kind of scanning or of any, of any animals starting so, off, really. So. so you don't have to program the arm where to no, go? No, there's no it program. And just, it's pretty automatic. Once it picks up the collar and identifies her, the arm comes out automatic. Um, if there's a, a, a cow that may be on three teats, you tell the system beforehand before you put her in, and that's kind of it. But. And is it a say a 3D uh, camera then, or a laser that uh, identifies the teats? No, it's a 3D camera basically. So it's actually it's time of flight we call it. So it actually sees the teats. Say so, you now um, the cow enters the robot, and the cow the, the robot knows instantaneously which cow it is. It's uh, identified on the collars, or is it the ear tag, or uh... no? It's a collar transponder we call it. So, yeah. yeah. It's uh, on the neck there. Uh, the reader is just on the feed bin, so, on the feed trough. And that collar then, does that give you, say, um, heat and rumination then as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, it does, yeah, yeah. Um, two light sensors to pick up the cows. Um, one picks up the cow with the, with the collar, and the other one kind of closes the door. And with the uh, heat and rumination, say if you had a, a very sick cow that was picked up as not yes. eating, or a yeah, cow that was it, bulling, would it automatically draft her, or...? Yeah, we'd have them set up that they'd, they'd automatically draft, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, detection automatic drafting and stuff like that so and manual draft into if you wish as well oh yeah of course yeah okay. i can hear the, the nuts coming down here gradually i suppose that's just keep the cow nice and yeah tri trickle feeds them yeah yeah, yes, yeah. and feed yeah. yield as well feed yield obviously yeah yeah, okay. yeah one interesting feature i like about the, these robots is um access from behind so yeah it's for tubing it's, or yeah it's one of the things we like is the key kind of features of it is our pit and that you have access to the elder behind. Um, so you know, if you want to check a quarter or other mint cream and like that and lads do kind of tube their cows and at the end of the year after drying them off I suppose yeah. Yeah. And individual quarter milking here now as well? Yeah so we have is if if you didn't if you wanted to keep back one quarter, maybe it was high cell count for whatever reason, um, we can we can just send one to the dump, we call it basically, or an MS1, so which is we have a good milk receiver here. Um, all our pre strippings and everything go into this calf milk receiver, or we can send the whole lot to this and send it out to the MS1. So if you have a cow, so with just high cell count in one quarter, you well, can yeah, keep all the yeah, good milk. Yeah, we can put three, three teats going to the milk tank and one to the MS1 and the calves or whatever you want to do it. Another interesting feature is the cluster arrangement here. Um, there's in-cluster wash. Yeah, we have pre-stripping, um, we have pre-dipping, milking, and then we have um, a post-dip then as well. So, so Always all, in the cluster. All, all in liner, yeah. Yeah. And anything then, no cross contamination. So anything that's flushed or washed away from the cow then is into yeah. the wash jar. Yeah. So away. each once we get milk flow on each individual quarter, so it's immediately flushed and into the calf milk receiver basically. Yeah. So. And say now, if you were say again now training a heifer, or if you had a cow with teats that were very close together. Um, you can actually manually attach your Yeah, rear. it's another kind of feature we have that if there was some kind of an issue for, for any reason whatsoever, it's basically all it presses manual mode and then press the green button once and it lets in your vacuum into your cup. And you can. So you can physically grab the cup yourself? Yeah, and put it the on arm floats so you can grab the arm and you can put on your, your cup. So good. It's, uh, it's, it's, that's like it. So with our orange button, you can lift the arm. Lock it in position if you want to check your cords. 
check your pipes, make sure everything are okay. And tighten it back up. Long press and um, go back in, back into CIP, so the cleaning position. And just enable the box again. Curl entering. Number is picked up. She's in the medium position. It's expecting eight kilos from her. The air blow is, is drying off the camera, so it's washed every time it comes in. Squirt of water. So one cup at a time gets vacuumed. Very safe for the operator. Yeah. So now the high uh, pulsation rate, you're stimulating and washing the teeth. So that depends on the, the age and lactation or of the animal. The longer lactation, the higher stimulation will give. So it's, it varies from, from cow to cow as she moves along in her lactation. So we'll just take off manual control then and it's... Back in auto again. Back in auto again. So it's helpful when you have a, a freshly calved heifer, so maybe small, small teeth, yeah. teeth, um, hard elder, let's say, just get her in, maybe just to hold it up for a second or two and just get the, try to get the flagging off her. Take the pressure take off. Take the pressure off, yeah. yeah. And you hear the pulsation starting to slow down once we get milk flow. So we have milk flow now. And now so we should start transferring into the... Into the receiver. Yeah. So we also do uh, uh, have flow-dependent pulsation. So for a high, very fast flow on cow, turn the stimulate the pulsation right down. So just free flow and for free flow on milk, you could hear the pulsation slow right down for fast flow on cows. So just milk them out quicker without putting too much pressure on the cow. Okay. And you've got individual um, pulsation going to or individual vacuum going to each quarter. Yeah, yeah. So it, again, like most robots and parents, they can shut off as a quarter's milk is removed. Not detecting milk flow in one of the quarters. It's a very quiet working environment, isn't it, compared to a standard parlour? It is, well, with the variable speeds, vacuum pump, like most parlours now, with variable speeds, they are quite, quite quiet, but the vacuum pump is, can be far away. So you just have the noise, your pulsation, your pumps kicking in and out. About how far now could you have, say, your, your milking yard away from your bulk tank? How far can you pump? We can pump... Uh, we don't, like, the rule of thumb is try and keep milk line as short as possible. We don't like keeping, having... Uh, it just causes more problems. You have more line to wash, more chemical, more hot water. So, but we can pump up to 100 metres okay. from the box. Like. The um, receiver jar here is, is actually quite small. And, yep. um, maybe you want to talk as well about the way the, the milk enters? Yeah, so a milk enters from this side, it's put in a swirl motion so it doesn't damage, it's designed not to cause problems with uh, free fatty acids of breaking up the milk, so it's swirled around and sent in and drops gently into the, the bottom of the receiver, okay. like, um, if every five litres or so is, is pumped away then, so it's a small jar just for that reason. Okay. Where with our separation jar, it's to hold the full cow's milk and that can be all sent off then together, like. Okay. So the three robots working off of one vacuum pump? Working off one vacuum pump. Um, this system was, I think, was put in 2018, so it has three supply units, but where now the latest machines can go in, can, one supply unit can control up to four robots. Okay. So there are four boxes on the one supply unit and one vacuum pump. And um, say now, in the scenario where you were doing repairs to one robot or you were doing some maintenance, yep. you can still uh, keep working away on the other two? Uh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Generally, say, when we come to here, like the two of us would be coming to service one machine, get that out of the way, just do one at a time and not to be blocking up the system. So you'd always have two machines working. Okay. That would be the, that'd be the plan. Uh, when, when we're servicing the machine, all the long milk tubes are all replaced, everything. Everything that carries milk is replaced on the 
on the line, let's say. And is that kind of an annual contract that the farmer would have, or, or is that an option as well? It, well, it, it, service contracts are option optional with the farmer. Most of the most of the, the gear customers now we have are all on service contracts with okay. us. So, but it's probably a fair bit of general maintenance that the farmer can do himself, like oh, changing yeah, liners and yeah, the liners and things like that, cords and the, the, the green blocks, the whole stuff. If there's any kind of small issues, maybe some leak or something like that, most farmers can are well capable. Like it's all there in front of you. Mm -hmm. the, I know the electronics are are inside the box. So we try and get them to stay away from that yeah. as much as possible. But small issues, they can most of them can do themselves. Uh, it's no different to a conventional milking parlor where you have your your pump, your receiver, and your main line back to your tank. It's just slightly different tweak on a on an old tradition. The vacuum line is uh, fairly similar to what you'd see in a, in a standard parlour, but the milk lines are tiny, aren't they? Yeah, an awful lot smaller, yeah. yeah, an awful lot smaller. Like, you don't need a flow? You don't need a flow, yeah. no, because we're only pumping five litres at a time of milk down. And then when you're washing, of course, it cuts down in the volume of water. Exactly, you yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can get a good slug through it and get a good wash of the line. Yeah. With a nice stable vacuum with 90 mil for these three boxes, so that's more than a lot of probably conventional parlours would have. Yeah. Great stuff. Um, the height of the pit, then, um, you know, yeah, we're comfortable for working on cows, but still very easy to do any maintenance on the machine. The pit, yeah, normally we say is 0.9 of a metre, so everything you can see is a nice working height, even for ourselves, maintenance, servicing. You know, everything is, is there. So, um, yeah, everything is very accessible from the pit, basically. And a nice airy open shed, then with plenty of yeah. uh, daylight to kind of keep yeah, cows happy. Basically, yeah, cows are they're they're not going into dark corners basically, so um, they like coming in, they like visiting the box. Everything is nice and smooth. This side of the building now is quite open. Would we ever have uh, problems with cold, wind, or frost or anything like that? No, no, very seldom. We'd have lads maybe saying that they did get kind of frozen pipes or anything like that. Very seldom. So I suppose the fact that it's slowly issue. milking all day long just keeps yeah, everything taut yeah, up. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, you could, it, you'd have interval washes, so if there was no cow visiting within 30 minutes or 40 minutes, it gives a rinse, give it a rinse so it keeps the water coming in again. And then maybe, is it, um, is it three or two, uh, say, acid or detergent washes per day? Uh, two alkalines, one acid, so normally we do Probably two washes, so with our system it's a circulation wash. Yep. So it takes about 20 minutes each wash, or 40 minutes a day. Okay. So it's not too much downtime really. And for um, fresh cows now that would have colostrum or they, they may still have the, the, the tubes uh, from the previous drying off uh, within their system, yeah. um, you can segregate that milk and then divert it for calf feeders or to the calf buckets? Yeah, so the MS1s are outside, just outside the dairy there, on the wall outside. So the farmer here, he puts his milk cart in under, because he's three robots with the system, so it's three MS1s, so they're all nice, compact together. He puts his car calf cart in under him and collects his milk. And the cord at the top there, just a little chaser to get the cow out when she's finished? Yeah, yeah. cow, we don't like shocker, mm. trainer we call them, so yeah, if they stay in the box for, you can set it, but normally if the door is open and they don't move after 10 seconds, it doesn't, does not a massive shock starting off, it gradually builds up, so it starts light and if they're not moving it gets a little bit stronger then. The fact that the truck in the front of the robot moves completely out of the cow's way though when she's finished is a good incentive for her to get on and yeah, move on. Yeah, exactly, yeah, but you would have, you would see the cows that are getting cute and smart yeah. that obviously they like the nuts, so they, they try and step back, round. so, yeah. Uh, you see we have two cow trainers here in case they back back a bit, so. There's one in the middle and then one behind, so. So okay. we're uh, just outside the, the dairy here. Uh, I noticed there's uh, two feed bins here. Yeah. Um, can you maybe talk about the, the feeding options with the with the gear robots? Yeah. So basically, we can we can Michael has two different feed types going to each box. Okay. So we can have up to three solid and one liquid feed. Liquid feed more so for the northern market indoor systems like. But um, yeah, it, it seems to work well. Whether it's a high mag nut and a low yield nut, 
mix and match whatever way they, they kind of want to do it. Okay, very good. So for feed to yield then, it's not a not an issue, say, if you've got cows on a very heavy feed race, they're not getting a huge amount of uh, magnesium and calcium there. Exactly, yeah. you, can, you can balance it out, it all depends on, on what you have in the nut. Okay, very good. Yeah. Grand. Mix and match. So um, these are the wash units for the robots? These are, yeah, these are our, our, uh, basically the wash control for each robot. Um, like I say, on our new systems, one controller can, can control up to four robots and wash the lines. So we have con three controllers. We have our twin filter down here at the back, our play cooler, buffer tank, and back to our main tank. So we have acid detergent and parasitic then as well, is it? Parasitic and uh, uh, cluster flush then as well. Cluster flush as well? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So say now um, when the bull tank arrives to empty the, the milk tank here, yeah. Um, we can continue milking here with the buffer tank? With the buffer tank, yeah. So that will hold up about 300 litres of milk. So it's adequate time for the tank to be washed, okay. em emptied and washed and ready for back to take back milk. So as soon as, as the wash is finished, milk is transferred to the front of the tank. Okay. That's washed then separately. It's rinsed out and then washed in the next main wash. So there's no interruption to milking then? No interruption of milking, no. Okay. No, just bypass with the valves underneath and send back the line in. All our lines are all stainless steel. It's yeah. So like our return wash sent back out. So we have two. That's why we have two lines here. Wash down to the valve and return back, all the way back into our, our troughs, our wash troughs inside yeah. in our unit. So um, with a, a robot scenario then as well, doing three washes a day, there's quite a, a large hot water requirement. Um, I noticed that there's a gas uh, heating here, but there's yeah. also heat recovery. Also heat recovery, yeah. Um, Michael installed that, I think, in the, uh, started last year. So I think he's getting good uh, figures and return on that, like he's very happy with it. Okay, so um, maybe you'd like to talk about uh, the dealership you have with uh, GIA and the areas you cover and um, the services you offer? Yeah, so basically, uh, well, my name is, is Peter Long, um, co-director with Robin McCormick here for, with FTS Dairy Services. Um, we're looking after all the gear robots, so from, from Carlo down to as far as Mitchellstown, um, and from I even. Um, so we offer a 24 hour breakdown service. So from supply uh, install to um, 24 hour breakdown, that's what we do, basically. Um, Many vans on the road then as well? Uh, just yeah, two of us for, yeah. for the time being. So a week on, a week off call. So. Yeah. We've been doing it for a good number of years now, so we're well used to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, do you see the, the market for robots increasing? Uh... Absolutely, but like, it, again, it's not for every farmer. So you can't just sell to guys who want to maybe get into robots for the wrong reason. So we, you need to be smart about who we're selling, to, selling robots to as well. The farm has to be right and the farmer farm has, has to be, to be right, comfortable yeah. with the technology as well. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah.